Hello, my name is Blake Minsky, and I am with Codesmith Tools. Today I will be giving an overview of our CSLA templates. In this video I will be going over what is CSLA, the quick start, and a pet shop sample application built with our CSLA templates. What is CSLA? CSLA is a business object framework built by Rockford Lotka at lotka.net. It allows you to focus on the business issues and less on the technology and implementation. You can learn more about CSLA by picking up a copy of Expert C-Sharp or VB 2008 Business Objects. You can also visit Lotka.net for more information on CSLA. We will now generate a working pet shop application using the CSLA Quick Start. Once Codesmith Studio is open, underneath the Template Explorer, we're going to go to the Codesmith Samples folder, Frameworks, CSLA, and right click the quick start.cst and select execute. Next, we'll configure the source database to be our pet shop database. And as you can see, there are the ASP.NET membership tables that we will want to ignore. So we will go and edit the ignore expressions. Now it's time to generate. These three projects generate on build. We will want to reload these projects. This project is considered the business layer and contains all your business logic. This project contains all your data access layer code. And this project is your UI project. We will now take a look at the Entities Kidsmith project file. We will right click and go to Manage Outputs. Double click on the output name. Now it is very easy to change each business object type based on the database table. For example, if I want to change an edible child the account table to a switchable object all I have to do is click on the switchable object ellipse right here and select account. Notice it's going to be removed from the edible child collection and placed in the switchable object. It's also very easy to configure business object lists in the same manner. The quick start will automatically figure out your database relationships and add a child list or root list if it is needed. We will now go over the Pet Shop Sample application. To open the Pet Shop Sample application, once Codesmith Studio or Codesmith Explorer is open, underneath the Template Explorer, right click on Codesmith Samples and select Open Folder in New Windows Explorer. Next, go up to the Samples directory, Projects, Framework Samples, CSLA, C Sharp, Pet Shop, and open up the Pet Shop solution. Before stepping in the code, I would like to show you the UI really quick. So we'll set the UI project as a startup project. I'm assuming you have seen this before. If not, you can check it out by debugging. The business project contains three folders that group your business objects, your collection business objects, your criteria classes, and your entity business objects. Each business object is separated into three partial classes, a profile.cs partial class, which is a non-generated partial class. It contains your validation rules, authorization rules, and any custom logic that you add profile.dataaccess class which contains all your data access for the business object. A generated partial class that contains the constructors, all the generated validation rules, your properties, and your factory methods. Now let's take a look at the profile non-generated partial class. As you can see it contains a factory method that gets a profile by a username. I had to add this functionality in. What it does is it creates a new profile criteria class by passing in the username. 
This data data portal .fetch method uses reflection and calls the data access data portal fetch method, which in turn calls the data access layer, which is a singleton profile fetch. Then we created two properties, a shopping cart and a wish list. We also added a cu custom method to cart list to get the cart by a unique ID and to tell it if it's a shopping cart or not. If we take a look, the generated validation rules were added by default based on the string length of the column. The business properties that were generated are pretty straightforward. You can see that it was smart enough to generate two properties based on relationships, one to the carts table and one to the accounts table. These are lazy loaded. Your data access classes are pretty straightforward. You have your create, which is called on create. You have your fetch, or anytime you retrieve your business object. And then the data portal insert, which is called anytime you create a new object and you save it. Your data portal update, anytime you update a dirty object. And data portal delete, which anytime you call delete on the object. Now let's take a look at the cart list. You can see that we added a property to calculate the total of the cart. A few methods. One called set quantity, which takes an item ID and then it goes through all the items in the cart, finds the item ID, and if it's found, then it updates the quantity. And then we have the add, which takes an item ID the unique ID and it is shopping cart. What it does is it first checks to see if a cart item is found and if it is then it updates the quantity. Otherwise it creates a new cart item and sets the quantity to 1. The remove removes an item from the cart. Now let's go over the steps it takes to create a new user. As you can see it gets the username from the control and then it gets the profile via the data portal fetch method. Then it checks to see if the profile username is blank and if it is it creates a new profile by calling profile which calls data portal create. Then it sets a few properties on the class and it saves it. This save will call data portal insert. Next let's go over what it takes to add an item to the shopping cart. It checks a query string for a string called item ID and gets its value. Then it grabs a user's profile, checks to see if the username is empty, and if it's not, then it calls add on the shopping cart, the method which we previously seen, and then it saves the profile. Now let's go over what it takes to check out. You can see that there's a billing form that contains the user's address. This is loaded on load. The profile is passed into the address class. And all it does is it grabs the first account on the profile and fills out the form. When the checkout is complete, you can see that we're grabbing the user profile, we're checking to see if the cart is not empty, then we're binding a control to the shopping cart, updating the, t the total price and the credit card information, which is all fictitious. Then we're creating a new order, calling order.newOrder. We're filling out some information about the order. Then we're updating the shipping information from the billing form control. Then we're saving the order. We added this functionality in, which is allows us to simulate a back order. All we're doing is we're getting the inventory item, and we're decreasing the count by how many items were ordered. Then we're saving the inventory item. If there were actually items on back order, then we display it to the user through a literal control. Then we clear the shopping cart and save the profile. This takes care of everything. For more information on the CSLA templates, visit our community site at community.kidsmithtools.com. For examples, video tutorials, downloads, and nightly builds.